Okay, this is a look at the Tyrannus setup for the X380 V303. Go into the menu, I've created a model for the V303. And we can go into that. <clears throat> I also created an image, I won't get into how I did that. There's uh, guides online, you can see how to do that. Took a snapshot and then um, added it to the uh, Tyrannus first thing you have to do is set the go all the way down here set the mode to internal D8 channels 1 through 8 and we also do the bind on the transmitter in this case I'm trying out the D4R-2 I may end up using may end up using there we go might end up using the easy UHF or the D8R-XP. I haven't decided yet. I'm having range issues with the, the D4R-2 still. And I haven't tried out the D8R just yet. At any rate, uh, that's what you do there. And then we go on to the actual inputs. Here they all are here. Throttle, I set a expo at 25%. As of now, I haven't fully tested that uh, to see if that's a smooth enough <clears throat> if that's a smooth enough curve or not, so that it doesn't jump from 50% to 100% with one small motion. That was the goal of the expo, right there. And here's the mixes. I had to use a custom curve on channel 5. Channel 5, just to recap here again. Channel 1 is your pitch, left and right. Channel 2, the elevator. Channel 3, throttle as you can see. 4, rudder. Channel 5, that is your headless mode. Channel 6 is return to home and regular. Or not return to home. And for each of those, I had to use some special settings to make them work without digging too deep. That's what I used right here a custom curve value, uh, custom curve one for the headless one. And I used a not equal to L2 logical switch for the auto land so that it doesn't fire auto land if you're already on return to home. Uh, checks for that on L2 and then on the SF switch for return to home I had to uh, do a diff of minus 50 and I set the logical switch of L1 value to make return to home be where it needs to be on the bar uh, more on that in a second Channel 7 for FAP, use a custom curve there. Uh, the reason for the custom curves on each of those is because there are three position switches, and I only want two settings out of all three. I want the other two to basically go to zero and the one to go to the setting we we're looking for. And the dials on channel 8, again, that is uh, RS. That's that guy right there. So I have FAP. FAP. On here, off here, off there. FAP. And we have we have the uh, heading lock heading forward, lock. Off, lock off and off. And the custom curve values allow for this to be zero at each heading of these other off. two points. We have the return to home, this guy, SF. Return to home. He goes red, back off, and we also have SH. Flight mode land. Hold it for two seconds. Fires up. And I can shut that off. Of course, uh, again, the FAP is here. FAP. Dial being that right select. And I believe that is it. That
covers all the major ones here. And digging in again here to this the settings individually here, I'll just go in and show you channel 5 for headless. There's what I ended up using, the custom curve, and we'll jump to that in a second. Go to CV1 so you can see what that one looked like for headless. And the Y values, minus 98, minus 97-ish for each of those, and then full on 98. So the top two are your zero points for the other two positions, and then the 98 is your full was off slightly. And going back. Auto land. There we are there. Not equal to L2. L2. Right there. A equals X. SF switch checking for the return to home at 100. So as long as it's the return to home isn't on at 100%, we can auto land or auto take off. Channel 6. Uh, where are we at here? Return to home. that guy using the differential of minus 50 looking at L1 in this case I um, set L1 to be 0 because that's where it needs to be when it is off or I'm sorry when it is on when return to home is return on return to home that guy goes to 0 that's the halfway point FAP using custom curve 3, which is very similar to the other one. And you can see that 198 and 19. This one was, well, it was similar, but the numbers were a little bit different. Um, had to be at around 20 for FAP to be on, and the other two represent off completely. Whereas the first one, they were at minus 98 and minus 97. Now, there were some parameters there that made those ones flip to the negative as opposed to the positive. And last but not least down here, we have the um, FAP dial FAP and the right select, as we just showed you. And that's about it. Everything seems to be functioning and ready for a test flight pretty much once I figure out which receiver to go with. And that's the final stage. Again, at this point, I have spliced on the um, connectors from the flight controller into a servo connector. That works nicely here uh, over those two, three pins there. We jump her three to four to go to PPM mode. And on the back side behind the power three pin connector, the second pin over, that's the RX, uh, the uh, minimum OSD pin for the RSSI. And I have, I have it disconnected right now, but that's where that goes for RSSI outside of the CPPM, combined PPM cable. And figure out the receiver and uh, test fly.